tonight, huh? Yeah. It's, yeah. And that's how, um, what's the, hey Sue! I'm trying to think what the other bird is, it's like that, where the feather, the color is only at the tip. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to start prepping it. Then I just start separating the skin from the body. You can see how paper thin that skin is. So once I get some more in, I throw dust in there to keep the skin from re reattaching itself. So now that the skin is opened up, I'm going to make the first cut. I'm going to disconnect the tail bone. going to strip green. If it had like skinny toes, it almost look like a bullfrog. The way that fold comes down over the two pan up. Okay. You can see the tail is so I'm still attached, but floppy. And um, root around in Dolman's Highlands of Central or Middle America. So now I'm going to start flipping the bird inside out. The first thing I do is I push. So Mike Bernard's going to keep tail. it. So, I don't know Back. if he's real good with Central American, South American frogs. Yeah. Snip um, away some of the meat that's still holding on. You know, I'm going to look at it and give it my best guess. I don't have good guides for that region, you know, other than dual Just keep throwing dust on um, there. But, you know. Yeah, the taxonomy is all really different now. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so you can start to see the body cavity so start to emerge. Frog and that people have and now I'm going to disconnect the legs. Yeah. But if Mike doesn't know what now I'm just pushing the skin towards the head. in our house tonight. Yeah, yeah. So, got the bathroom all steamy and he's hanging out in there. <laughs> My aunt used to go to a, a really large greenhouse that was more frequently bringing stuff in from Miami. She would just go there and buy a bunch of plants once or twice a year. I remember my cousin wanted me to go because there's a lot of lizards there. So we went and there are brown animals in all of the flower pots. We'd find freshly uh, hatched babies running around. We'd catch adults. Uh, people are probably buying jade plants and taking them home, and then suddenly they've got a lizard running in their house. Yeah. Uh, you know, That's like those, uh, those weird little worm snakes. Yeah. yeah. I, I forget the scientific name of them, but uh, you get so many of those come in the dirt. Yeah. And. Carpheophis. Carpheophis. Carpheophis is the. The native worm, like the actual eastern worm snake that you, you kind of commonly find in the south. Yeah. This is a, an exotic. Oh, that's okay. just a tiny little. You can little, start to see that. It looks like a worm. Okay. Breast and, muscle uh, coming it's, out. It's well established throughout the south because of you know potted plants and such. Yeah. And the native one in my yard. So now I'm going to disconnect the wings. Cal always sends me photos. After I throw more dust on it. I find them all the time looking for ants. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, 
And what's the dust made of? It's just corn cob dust all ground up. Keeps my hands clean, it keeps the skin dry, it absorbs moisture, keeps the feathers out of my way. It's keeping the skin from reattaching to the body. Put something in between. There's one wing, there's the other wing. Now I'm working the skin over the head. So there's the base of the skull starting to peek out. There we go. Birds, the ears of the birds, the skin goes inside of the ears, so I have to pinch and pull the skin out of the ear. So there's the ear hole. Do it again on this side. Pinch and pull the skin out. And these black dots on the skin, those are molt tracks. So this cardinal was in the process of growing new feathers on its head and looks like a little bit, ooh, some heavy molds on its back. So we'll write that all down. So I'm gonna remove the eyeballs. And they kind of look like blueberries, unfortunately. If you like eating blueberries. Here's another eye. Now I'm going to disconnect the body from the skin. And we only leave the top of the skull. Here's the brain. Here's the brain of the cardinal. And now I check the ossification. So, let me get this out of the way. See, so there's two little windows in the skull right here. Two little teardrop spots where you can kind of see through. And the rest is all bubbly. So that we can tell from this that this is not an adult bird. So the skull is not 100% ossified. So I'd say that's about 80% ossified. So I'm gonna write that down. And this bird died in November. So you can tell by plumage it's a male. And the skull was only about I'd say 85% ossified. So it's a hatch year bird. So it was hatched this past spring. So I can tell by its plumage that it's male, but we're just gonna make sure. How are you going to do that? So I opened up the body cavity, mm -hmm. and their gonads rest on their backs. It's kind of tough to see, because this was a, a November bird, so it's not in breeding condition. Let's see if I can get a little speck of dust out of the way. So it's kind of hard to see, but you see these kind of yellowish gland, that's the adrenal gland, and below it there's two little dots, and those are its testes. So if it was in breeding condition, those would be like quadruple in size, but since it's a winter bird, it's not allocating any energy towards growing its gonads. I'm gonna write down. T E right. Less than one by one millimeter. And the color was black. Now I'm gonna so this bird came from a rehab center, so I'm not going to check its stomach because we can assume that they fed this bird. So what's in its stomach is not from the nature or natural environment that it came from. So we're just going to skip that step and we're going to take a tissue sample. 
So we take the heart and a bit of breast muscle to fill up this two milliliter tube. So there's the cardinal's heart. I'm gonna put that in the tube. And then I'm gonna fill up the rest of the tube with some breast muscle. Now this goes in the freezer after I put the cap on it. <laughs> so here's our tissue sample from this cardinal and it will go into the freezer. So now we're pretty much done with the body cavity. So now we're going to focus back on the skin. So now I'm just going to start picking off all the meat and all of the fat. There's his little tongue. And when I started, I put a little piece of cotton down his throat, so that's where that came from. So now we need the very top of the skull, so I'm going to trim this out. These are just little bits of fat I'm pulling off. We need to be we need to make the skin as clean as possible. We don't want these birds to stink at all. So if they stink, it'll attract pests. So I'm gonna get the meat out of the wings. I'll do it again to the other side, and I'm just kind of picking fat as I go.
I'm going to get the meat off of the legs. So I just shimmy the wing or the leg as far out as it'll go. And then I'm only going to leave just the top part of that leg bone. Trim away all the meat. And then shimmy the leg back in its socket. Do it again on the other side. Oh, just a bit of fat there. Okay. Get the rest of the meat off this leg. leg was broken, so it's a real short little bone left in there, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> Corsi. What? I found in my game for sure. Huh. Ew. Spaghetti. Ooh. Wait, is that actually spaghetti? It's a worm. It's living in its guts. Is it a brown worm? Oh. Now I have to get the meat out of the tail. Okay, and now that all the fat and meat has been removed, I can re-invert the body and the little head. So here's a little beak. Hold on. I just have a flat bird. So now this bird is skinned out, completely empty on the inside. You can see those molt tracks coming in, those new feathers that we're growing in. So, throw a little dust in there. And now we keep one wing and we spread it. Hey, Michelle. So. So we'll spread this wing and pin it like that. So we'll just put it aside for now. So now I'm shifting gears and now we're gonna start stuffing this little bird. So 
Birds have a like a third eyelid called a nictitating membrane. So we have to remove that before we give them little cotton eyeballs. So that kind of yellowish membrane. <laughs> Sometimes it's nice and cooperative and it'll just pull out just like this. And there we go. So now that eye socket's just nice and clean. Do it again on the other side. There it goes. Okay. Alright, we're gonna go watch the lecture. Okay. Happy lecturing. Okay. That's all clear. So now we can start stuffing them. So I'm gonna give them a little cotton eyeballs. That looks about the right size. Cardinals have notoriously thin skin, so I'm being extra gentle. There's one eyeball. Looks good. Got a second eyeball. And I just want to make them about the same size as each other. Looks good. All right. So now I'm going to anchor the wing. Let me do that by attaching a string to the bone that's left in the wing that stays with the bird. We're going to feed it through the hole that we made. Let me cut the wing off. Tie this to the wing. Slide that wing back in its little socket. And put this through the hole where that other wing was. Start stuffing the bird. So I'm gonna make a gigantic Q tip. I'm gonna feed this up through the bird and it's gonna help keep the bird stable as it's drying and keep it stable for its existence as a study specimen. I'm gonna use a different stick. Can't work under these conditions.
put a couple cuts in the stick and it gives the cotton something to grab onto. Just like that. Then I feed the stick out to cloaca, which is the hole where waste comes out, sperm comes out, and females where the eggs come out. Shimmy up the neck. And this little cotton ball will rest on the back of the skull of the bird. So now I've got a little, little puppet bird. So now I'm going to make a little cotton body and try to make it the same size as the bird was when it was alive. Maybe a little bit bigger. I like making them a little, a little poofier. Just kind of roll up a cotton cone like that. Looks about right. Then I use that stick as a guide. And I just feed the cotton up the neck. And we go out the mouth. Just like that. And then just gently drape the skin over that cotton cone. The cool thing about the feathers is if you pull on one of the feathers, it'll pluck right out. But if you grab them in a group, they all stay put. So I can just ever so gently work the skin down the cotton cone. And I want the bird to have a nice arc shape to it. So I don't want it to be necky, I want it to have a nice So I put a little too much cotton in there. So I'm gonna trim off a little bit. And then just start tucking. Starting to look like a cardinal again. There's, there's a few holes in there. <laughs> it wouldn't be a cardinal skin without a couple holes. So now I'm ready to sew this fella back up. back up. Make sure all these feathers are on the right side of the body. Just a couple quick stitches.
just kind of close it. And I want it to look just like that. Hello! Yay! And just do a slight little tug. Oh, that boy was full of boys. Where's the worm file? That's the second one. Yeah. I'm just going to tie off the string. Yes. Uh, it's really good. Yeah, it's the second one. Yeah. Hey. This is good. There's a lot of fish you can get around. Yeah. Fish. Huh. Yeah, that makes sense. Looks good. <clears throat> So now I just want to make this bird as symmetrical as possible. So I'm going to cross his little legs and tie them to the stick. And then I'm going to pin it. And when I do pin it, I'm going to make his toes nice and spread to make them easy to measure should someone want to measure them at some point. <laughs> we cooked really well. <laughs> okay, and now I'm going to anchor the wing. So I'm going to take a tiny bit of stick. I think we're both super Just like this. So I'm going to pin the wing in a tucked neutral position like this. So kind of hold it like that and I pull this string. And if you look at the, the elbow over here, or the, the wrist, see I pull on the string and once I see it start to tuck in like that, that's where I want to tie it. Put the stick over the, the hole that we created. Kind of pull the stick. And then when I see that elbow starting to pinch in, I tie it off. And that keeps that wing from flopping around. It kind of secures it in place. So it'll dry nice and close to the body. And then you can just no, just just like that. And now I'll just cut off the extra cotton coming out of his mouth. his little beak shut so he's not singing eternally. Just like that. Use a little bit of thread to tie it down. These big beaks are hard to tie down with their shape. So let's do the best we can. Oh. Try that again. <laughs> I did. Did you get my response? I said, thanks for the heads up. Oh. Sorry, I wasn't better at judging. Um, how late? No worries. Traffic problems? I left here and had to work late. And then I had a regular route. Okay. So now we are ready.
to pin this bird on a foam board. So we want the bird's tail feathers to be in the right order. We want them to be nice and symmetrical and straight. we pin them or the way they're going to dry so I take extra special care to get it nice symmetrical. Yeah, yeah but we're all just doing new, new birds. Well, I couldn't feel Some I what it was. ptarmigan. I knew we were all just looking at <laughs> Pin that wing as close to the body as I can. Looks good. It's like I'm here and I concentrate so much on what I'm doing. I'm gonna spread that tail just a little bit. I know it's been a long time. Laura brought coffee for you. Yeah, I brought a checkbook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does this one go? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't wait to finish it. Those yeah, are gorgeous. Look at those. Yeah. It looks like they got dipped in chocolate. <laughs> They're like those dairy dips. Remember those? Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen. Yeah. 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 Do they still do that? Yeah. They yeah. should. Yeah. Now, as the bird dries, will it dry exactly like that? Yep. In the shape that you've pinned it? Yep. And I just do a little tucking and... <laughs> Are we being videoed right now? Oh, no, right there. <laughs> I know, I was going to do my hair and everything. Get straight So, I'm pretty happy with this. It's symmetrical. The tail's not wider than the body. It's stop lights. It's stop lights. I, I wait till it's stop. Although the light did change and then my food off was like, oh. <laughs> and then how long will it, what's the next part for it? So now it will stay in the drying rack. It'll probably take about a week to dry. And then I'm going to spread its little wing. Oh, now that's, yeah. Pin under the alula, flattens it down. So those are the three big pins. I'm just gonna make sure these feathers are all in the right order. Make them nice and symmetrical. One cardinal down. Now that the bird is pinned, I'm gonna fill in the data sheet. So that bird had very light fat. Oh my god. Which is a little strange for a bird in November. For molt, it did have heavy molt on its back. He hasn't actually appointed her, he's just 
and the yeah, head. Still, like, I'm going to note that. And for the stomach, we're going to write not checked. And that's because this was a bird that came from a rehab center. So we do not record the stomach. And then the prep type. So we kept the skin, the wing, and a tissue sample. And that's it. So now I'm going to move on to my next bird. <laughs>